Experiment M5 is an extension of the force table experiment. In that, we applied forces at a point, measured their magnitude and their direction, and showed that at equilibrium they added up to zero. In this experiment, we're going to extend that a little bit. We're going to apply the forces to this bar and as you can see, the forces are being applied at different points. So we still need to know the magnitude and the direction of each of the forces, but we'll also need to find the point at which the forces are applied because that produces a rotational torque, which must also be in equilibrium. Now first, after you have the torque bar set up, make sure you do an accurate diagram because it's important to know the direction of the forces. Then, I've already recorded the magnitudes of the forces here. I have 5.5 newtons, 1.5 newtons, 1.5 newtons, and 6.5 newtons. And of course, I guarantee that if you ignore the weight of the bar itself, your forces will not add up to zero. So be sure that you mass the bar on one of the laboratory balances. Now, the next thing we need to record is the angles. For example, force F1 here is applied at an acute angle of 51.5 degrees. Force 2 at 44 degrees. And the directions of these angles relative to the bar are explained on the diagram that I've already drawn. Now the reason we have F3 hanging straight down is because the direction of a weight hanging straight down is the same as the direction of the weight of the bar. And we have to know that. So this is at just about exactly 85 degrees from the left end of the bar. And finally, force F4 over here is 35 degrees from the right hand end of the bar. Now, we'll find the mass of the bar on the laboratory balance and the direction of the bar's weight will be the same as the direction of F3. Now we want to measure the positions where the forces are applied. So we'll have to take the bar off here. And if you can do it without dropping the weights on the floor, the office staff downstairs will love you. They get very tired of hearing these things fall on the floor after about the 200th time. Now, what I'm going to do is balance the bar on this knife edge, which has been placed at the 50 centimeter mark of this meter stick. The balance point will be the position of the center of gravity. Now, that's affected somewhat by the position of these arms. If they're all pointing this way, it moves the center of gravity that way. So, you want to set the arms at at least approximately the value of the angles that you measured. And then, put it here. There, it appears to be pretty well balanced. So, with it balanced at the 50 centimeter mark, we know that the center of gravity where the weight of the bar is concentrated is at 50 
centimeters. Now I need to read the position of these other four forces. And of course there's some parallax, but an easy way to do that is to take a piece of paper or a card that's been folded so it has a square edge and simply and then it looks like that's at about 30.1 centimeters. This one is at about Hmm, so like about 40.5. The weight, of course, is at 50. F3 is at about 52.0. These numbers will vary, of course, with the positions of the angle indicators. And this one looks like it's at about 70.5. Okay, now, once you have found the mass, of the bar on the laboratory balances that will complete the data collection for the experiment. Then you want to show that the sum of the forces, both the X and Y components, add to zero and then you'll want to calculate the torques about two different axes and show that those torques add up to zero.